Hello everyone and welcome to this video overview of what's new in Vantage Update 8. This version adds many useful features such as the procedural cloud system, the image sequences as textures or uh, image file lists, the enhanced color corrections including filmic and contrast, and speed and memory optimizations. There are numerous other additions, so make sure that you test the new version for yourself. To demonstrate the features, I'm using this project, which has a lot of instances already scattered using the Chaos Scatter tool. I'd like to note also the material on this water body. Um, it uses a normal map, which has been composited with three layers. One is the uh, simple color for a flat normal, and a couple of layers using IFLs or image file lists that load up sequence of images that can be used as a texture. In this case, the images are normal maps that have been tiled and also looped. One of the layers also has a mask to create more variation. I'm going to send this scene to Vantage directly and not use LiveLink this time. Now, you can enable the clouds by here, and you can see that we already have cirrus clouds uh, to halfway there. You can increase or modify this. I'm going to also add some contrails. Yeah, you can see them here and here. And I'm also going to start increasing the density of the volumetric clouds. Currently, the clouds are not casting any ground shadows, and this makes them look a little bit um, off. So uh, to remedy this, let's reposition this. Okay, so to remedy this, I'm going to enable the ground uh, shadows and uh, increase the parameters so that you can see. Um, but bear in mind that increasing too much the density will create an overcast effect. So do, uh, don't overdo this. Now there are lots of parameters um, available also in V-Ray, the variation, the offset, um, and all these parameters allow you to customize the effect of the clouds to um, match your uh, needs. Uh, there is also uh, thickness and height, but uh, what I also want to uh, pay attention to is the wind. And uh, the wind currently um, doesn't do anything because there is no animation. And to enable the animation, it only works with the animated geolocation mode of the sun. So let's create a little bit of an animation here. I'm going to set this uh, animation to be only one hour of the day. All right. So the clouds are moving, and there are two parameters to control the way uh, the animation is going. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to first uh, set the animation to looping and uh, play it again. Okay. So now changing the uh, direction actually offsets the clouds based on their initial starting position, which is in uh, frame zero. And the wind strength controls the speed at which the clouds are going to move, again tied to the time of day from the animated geolocated sun. I'm going to adjust the direction so that the clouds move towards the camera, like so. And also I think we can increase the time period for the time lapse so that we can see some uh, change in the uh, lighting conditions. As you can see, the clouds uh, also respond to changes of the sun position, which is very useful when creating time lapses and believable um, lighting setups. Thanks to the real-time interactive updates, I can perform multiple look development iterations and uh, different variations to get to the result that I really need. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned the water material uses a sequence of bitmaps. These are not updated when I scrub the timeline, for example, due to performance reasons. However, we have a button here that will uh, force the update of all bitmap sequences, like so. You can see that if I move it again and update it, we reload, or Vantage reloads the new frame and updates how it looks. Uh, this works with uh, high quality rendering, so um, you don't have to press this button multiple times. I'm also going to um, enable the opacity tracing, and uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of optimizations. Now, um, we have a ray tracing optimization located over here. It's called ray termination and it can improve the frame rate significantly, depending on the scene, of course. Um, see, now if I disable it, the frame rate is about 25, and when I enable it, it goes to about 33, 34. 
so make sure you use it whenever you need a bit of a frame rate boost. We also added a memory optimization feature, which is called Dynamic Textures. This is essentially a system that uh, generates MIP maps or a level of detail for uh, textures. It creates different resolutions uh, of every texture, and Vantage only uses the most optimal version or resolution. You can see the memory goes down when the camera goes further away, and a little bit up when the camera moves closer, because the higher level is being loaded. Now let's create a couple of cameras. I'm going to enable the auto exposure. And I'm also going to um, enable our new feature, which is the composition grid overlay. It has several options. Um, you can see uh, we can change the width of the lines, the color, and also we have a couple of modes. Um, okay, I'm not going to use this color, but uh, we have different modes uh, for the uh, composition. Uh, we can use the central one, so let's uh, put the mountain in focus, or we can also use the rule of thirds. Let's reposition it in the lower right hand corner. Okay, so make sure that you give them a go and uh, use those guys to help you frame better your cameras. Let's see some of the other modes. Okay. Right, and uh, also for the golden spiral, there is option to flip the guide so that uh, you uh, position it better. So now using those guides, I'm going to quickly create uh, several cameras. And I'm thinking here about uh, animation with a couple of camera trucks, uh, maybe a bit of a zoom. So let's go in here and I'm going to try to position um, the mountain and in the upper right hand corner. And uh, let's zoom in, find something interesting like this, yeah, this rock. And uh, position that in the opposing corner, right. Yeah, that's, that's a good uh, dolly. And I think I'm done, so I'm going to move to the post tab and I'm going to show the new color corrections. So now we have contrast, but also uh, filmic tone mapping. And we support two of the modes, so um, this is the Hubble one. Um, just let's uh, adjust the parameters uh, or switch to the Ampus, which only supports gamma. Okay, and we also have the hue and saturation controls. Um, let's, let's just you know, adjust those and uh, see if we can find something interesting. Maybe too much of saturation, but I like it. And uh, let's leave it like this. By the way, Vantage will become idle when enough samples are reached, and you can control this from here. And now the last feature I'm going to show is the ability to copy and paste the viewport uh, to another application, say KS Player. Let's create another variation of that, say, I don't know, something more uh, in another hue. All right, something like that, and also Control C, Control V, and let's rearrange this. And I'm going to quickly create a couple of more variations and paste those in KS Player so that we can uh, review them for later. All right, a bit more contrast, a different time of day, paste it here. Again, different lighting, different clouds. All right. When I decide the look and feel that I like, I will quickly create the camera animation and render out the production sequence. And that concludes this video. I hope you like the new features. Thanks for watching and take care.